Hi, my name is Brad Constantine, and this is a podcast of the New Testament. I'll be using as the text the King James Version, along with the Joseph Smith Translation. Although this is not an official recording of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, every effort's been made to be as doctrinally accurate as possible. I'll also be using quotes from general authorities of the Church, the Apostles and Prophets, and BYU professors and others, and uh, every word out of the Scriptures themselves. So if you're ready for a really detailed analysis of the New Testament, you've come to the right place. Welcome. Hello there. This is going to be for John chapter 17, and this is the prayer that Jesus offers, which is known as the intercessory prayer. The prayer he offered on this occasion had three distinct parts. In the first part, verses 1 to 3, Jesus offered himself as the great sacrifice. His hour had come. The next part of the prayer, 4 to 19, was a reverent report to the Father of his mortal mission. In the last part, 20 to 26 of his prayer, Jesus interceded not only for the 11 apostles present, but for all who shall believe on Jesus through their word, in order that all would come to a perfect unity, which unity invested Christ in them as Christ is in the Father. Thus, all would be perfect in unity, and the world would believe that the Father had sent his Son. And that was uh, in life and teachings of Jesus. All right, verse 1. These words spake Jesus and lifted up. Remember, this is still Wednesday night. And lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour is come. Glorify thy Son, that thy Son also may glorify thee, as thou hast given him power over all flesh, that he should give life eternal eternal life to as many as thou hast given him and this is life eternal that they might know thee the only true god and jesus christ whom thou hast sent i have glorified thee on the earth i have finished the work which thou gavest me to do and now o father glorify thou me with thine own self with the glory which i had with thee before the world was I have remember the condescension of God, as I mentioned in the Book of Mormon, that he came down from from the glory that he had possessed in the pre-mortal life, and now he's uh, asking to go back to that. Verse 6, I have manifested thy name unto the men which thou gavest me out of the world. Thine thine they were, and thou gavest them me, and they have kept kept thy word. Now they have known that all things whatsoever thou hast given me are of thee. For I have given unto them the words which thou gavest me, and they have received them, and have known surely that I came out from thee, and they have believed that thou didst send me. I prayed for them, I pray not for the world, but for them which thou hast given me, for they are thine, and all mine are thine, and thine are mine, and I glorify, and I am glorified in them. And now I am no more in the world, but these are in the world. And I came to thee, Holy Father, keep through keep through thine own name those whom thou hast given me, that they may be one as we are. While I was with them in the world, I, ke- I kept them in thy name. Those that thou gavest me I have kept, and none of them is lost, but the son of perdition, that the scripture might be fulfilled. Again, this is uh, regarding Judas being a, a son of perdition. And uh, we think not, even though it says it here, that uh, he didn't have the gift of the Holy Ghost, uh, which which we've mentioned before. Uh, All right, so none of them was lost, but. So remember, as I mentioned, that some have thought that uh, maybe Judas will still be one of the judges of Israel. And this kind of indicates that he will not be. Verse 13, and now, I, and now I come to thee, and these things I speak in the world, that they might have joy fulfilled in themselves. I have given them thy word, and the world hath hated them, because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. I pray not that thou shouldst take them out of the world, but that thou shouldst keep them from the, from the evil. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Sanctify them through thy truth, and thy word is truth. As thou hast sent me into the world, even so I have also sent them into the world. And for their sakes I sanctify myself, that they also might be sanctified through the truth. Neither pray I for these alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through their word. That's us, isn't it? That they also, that they all may be one, as thou, Father, art in me, and I in thee, that they, that they also may be, in, be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. We need to know that there is great power in unity. And the glory which thou gavest me, I have given them, that they may be one, even as we are one. Now, by unity, I mean unity and righteousness, not wickedness. I in them, and thou in me, that they may be made perfect in one, and that the world may know that thou hast sent me, and and hast loved them as thou hast loved me. Father, I will that they also, whom thou hast given me, be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory, which thou hast given me, for thou lovest me before the foundation of the world. O righteous Father, the world hath not known thee, but I have known thee, and these have known that thou hast sent me. And I have declared unto them thy name, and I will declare it, that the love wherewith thou hast loved me may be in them, and I in them. 
So that's the end of the intercessory prayer, and we will see you next time. Bye.